now uh, we are going to start constitution first of all we have to know what is the meaning and nature of the constitution or what is the meaning of constitutional laws in short if you will say that cons uh, in regard of the constitution constitution has been defined as the basic law of a state this is the basic law of the state which outlines the framework and procedure of government this is the basic law of the state which outlines the framework and procedure of government in other words we can say the constitution is the collection of principles the constitution is the collection of principles according to which power of the government the rights of the government and the relationship between the two are adjusted means whatever the organ you have framed to run the country so these all organs have their own functionality have their own functions have their own rules and regulations but the country must have an ideology and must have some principles that on what direction the country has to go like india if we'll talk about the india indian government is a secular government it's a uh, socialist it's a republic it's a democratic country so the this is the formula where we want to go so to achieve these principles to achieve these goals we have to make some principles and those principles on on the the principles on which the whole law whole system of the country will depend must be codified if we will make the codification of such principles on which the country has to framed out and the functions of the government must be framed out that collection of principles are called the constitution in other words we can say that it is a supreme law of the country supreme law means no law can make a contradiction with the supreme law but all the laws for any work for any subject in the country must be fulfill the conditions the object the 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 image of the constitution so if you make the indian penal code it must not be in the contradiction with the constitution if you make any law like cpc crpc transfer of property whatever you have been made in the country no law can be in contradiction with the constitution why because constitution is the supreme law and this is the ideology of the country these are embodiment of the principles of the country on which the whole system of the country will really depend if the whole system of the country is depend on the constitution then each and every organ of the country each and every organ of the government each and every organ of the system shall be run by the constitution and if any law you have framed that is in contradiction with the constitution means this will infringe some provisions of the constitution if the provisions of the constitution is is infringed by any law what is the mean of that law what is the mean of that law the meaning of that law is only to follow the principles and object whatever is required by the constitution because constitution is framed out by the supreme persons by the whole country by the representatives of the whole country and we framed our nation's view we framed our nation's path where we have to move and what on what ideology on what principles we have to move if we have framed it it's mean no law no principle no organ no authority can do any work that 
it is in the violation of the constitution that is why it is called the supreme law in other words constitution is the collection of principles or body of fundamental rules which usually provides for the establishment constituent con constitution and organization of the organs of, of the government their powers and functions manners in which the state power and function has to be exercised their interrelationships the relationship between these organs of the government and the peoples of the country means it will govern the whole system the interrelationship between the organs why we we was made a organs we was framed the organs because of the smooth running of the country we was divided some work we was divided the power in india we have divided the power in uh, three parts three organs one is the legislation another is the judiciary and third one is the executive so we was divided we have divided uh, the whole system in three parts and further in these parts we have further divided according to our our convenience and made the organs for the convenience so this constitution is provided that what is the function of the executive what is the function of the judiciary what are the power shall be used by the enjoyed by the judiciary what the power shall be enjoyed by the legislation what the power shall be enjoyed by the execution and what is how these all organs will form in case of formation of this system we framed the constitution that is called the basic principle of the country to run these usually what is the necessity to frame the constitution there may be there, there is some necessary why the uh, the framers of the constitution was framed the constitution why not directly made the laws in relation to the subject matter they formed the constitution what was the reason like the constitution determines the organizations it determine it determines the organizations powers and functions of the different organs of the government what it determine the organization powers and functions of the different organs of the government it also determine the relationship between each other it restrain the government on the behalf of the individuals like government having a power and uh, someone says that power makes corrupt if the government say government moves towards the corruption then who will restrain the government that is the constitution on the behalf of the individuals can restrain the government not to do the corruption if the government is going towards corruption then within 5 years the peoples of india having in power to vote and we change the government that is the system next this is a state without a constitution will become a regime of anarchy if there is not any constitution in the country it will become a anarchy it will move without any driver in any way this is the constitution which makes a control over the government it guarantees the right of the peoples or citizens of the country and also define the operations of the sovereign power operations of the sovereign powers this is the basic formula behind the constitution we can also say that the constitution is a mirror where we can see what type of country this is and what type of the formation of the country is so there is so many type of constitutions in the world and on the basis of such constitution we can define that what type of country that is these are 
some country having a written constitution some uh, having unwritten constitution but everyone having a constitution written or unwritten india this is uh, the thinking of the men's or we can also uh, analyze that the constitution of india is the longest one in the world this is longest constitution of the world each and every provisions is defined in our constitution for each and every organ there is nothing in the air this is not leaved any matter for the discretion of the organs we have defined the functions duties powers and the constitution of the each organ through the constitution so in the words of kc weir kc weir w h e a r e kc weir they observed that we cannot agree that there is any country least of all the united kingdom which has a system of government embodied solely in the written rules or solely in the unwritten rules kc weir said that we can't we are not agreed that there is any country in the world that is depend solely on the basis of the written constitution or solely depends on the unwritten constitution each and every country having something written and something unwritten so this is at least we can leave one country that is united kingdom so what is the system of the united kingdom if they do not having a written constitution then there may be some system because without system the country cannot run so they having a house of lords they have a organ that is the house of lord and house of lord is a live constitutional body is a live constitutional body matter comes to the courts courts decides on that after decision it's make an appeal and the final appeal shall be heard by the house of lords so house of lords define that what is the rule right now and whatever the last decision has been made by that house of lords that is deemed as a principle of the country so they make a live decision on any matter of the principles of the country even by the parliament the parliament pass some laws it goes to the house of lords for the final decision and house of lords defined it that this is constitutional or not this principle is applicable in country or not like we passed any law in the parliament and finally the court checked it that it is constitutional or not same like this <coughs> a live body in the house of lords decides that whatever the law is passed by the legislation is correct in the current scenario or not and whatever the principle has been framed by the house of lords this is applicable for whole nation it is applicable on each and every organ of the nation that is why we can say that they have a constitution but they do not given it the name constitution because they framed the principles through house of lords they checked it through the house of lords the house of lords is the final final authority for any appeal for any decision finally the decision makes by the house of lords that is why we can say they do not having a written constitution but they having a live constitution and that system is better than other systems but it cannot be apply in india because the corruption is on the top way at the key stage that is why if you will frame the house of lords type constitutional body then there may also be the corrupt person and and may make the decisions according to the, their survivors according to their friends according to their ministers so we cannot afford such type of risk because here there is not any way there is not any uh, image or there is not any person or oh, oh, not not the system here because corruption is goes in the network that is why we can't say okay the second is rigid and flexible constitution 
some countries having a rigid constitution that it cannot be amended at all and some countries have a flexible constitution that it can be amended easily the rigid constitutions mostly required three fourth majority to amend it mostly required three fourth majority to amend it your four fifth majority to amend it but in case of flexible constitution the simple majority can amend it in india both type of system is here some provisions cannot be amended by the simple majority but mostly principles can be amended by the simple majority but where the matter is in concern of the all states the two third majority is required where the matter is in relation to the basic structure of the constitution two third majority is required so we applies both type of system this is rigid as well as flexible where the rigid constitution usually framed where a, the countries which was constitution constituted purely on the basis of federation like usa usa was formed by an agreement they having 51 or 52 countries usa have 51 or 52 countries when it was independent there was only 13 countries means 13 state in the words of another in the words of usa they had 13 states right now they having 51 or 52 states because states make an agreement with the federation and surrenders their some rights to the federation and they are still independent in remaining matters means central government is not empowered in usa to interfere in each and every matter of the state the state is independent and the voting is counted that uh, if you will see the election procedure of the president one state gives full vote to the president full vote to the president see a state makes a survey in their own state whatever the contestants is there they makes a voting suppose one state having 43 seats it's mean if there is two candidates the winner candidate required 24 your 23 even 43 22 the winner candidate required 22 seats to win that state when a candidate wins in that state after getting more than 22 seats at the time of counting of the votes in at the central level all the 43 votes shall be count in the account of person who wins that state not understood in one state there is 43 seats to win in that state 22 seats are required whoever will find will win on 22 seats will gain all the 43 votes in case of central because he wins that state the whole state is his he got it the whole state so the all the seats of that state shall be counted in his voting this is why the main contestants focused on the major states like ohio there is a the major states ohio texas florida these are the major states because the counting of such four or five states shall count shall make a major portion and some ha some having a small state and they cannot reorganize it like india indian government reorganized by uh, amending the states by uh, joining two states by by forgetting to state one state they can do but in usa they can cannot do because each and every state become a part of the federation by an agreement they are not the unitary body they are the federal body and by this federation all the states surrendered some right to the president of that state and the remaining right belongs to the state themselves and the central is not empowered to interfere in those matters because this state are 
joined by an agreement so if the central will breach the agreement the state is empowered to get it independent from the portion that is why that is called united states of america america means whole continent continent in that continent there is approximately 100 and more states in international language the country is called a state in international language so these states mean these country having more than 100 100 countries so 50 country or more than 50 country make a federation like a, Euro a european union they make a federation like european union in the europe ussr in the russia ussr was formed on the basis of the agreement like the usa now the uh, european federation european union is also formed by the agreement they make a common currency also and as well as the local currency also both the currencies are applicable there they make a common currency called euro and the local currency whatever the franc and ye wo jo bhi hai unke paas so what was it it is an agreemental state united states means union this is this formula uh, the united state of america is also formed by this formula but because they are so rich persons that is why there was no disturbance and they having natural boundaries they having a natural boundary one side there is the pacific sea pacific ocean another side the atlantic ocean in above there is the canada makes the north pole and in the south only one country boundary is lies there so they having a natural boundaries that is why the revelations is is not uh, make a law but not not uh, got the way to enter in the state if the state was united state of america was making federation by an agreement means there must be the rigidity in the constitution if they will not make a rigid constitution then each and every state will raise the hand by their own convenience that is why there must be the rigid constitution but in india we do not need to make a rigid constitution there is something rigidity that is the basic structure cannot be changed there is need there, there, but there is no need for the hardship rigidity why because we are not the federation made by an agreement we make a federation for our convenience we make the federation for our convenience we was divided in states india is divided in states not state form the india like usa is formed by the states india is not formed by states <coughs> india formed the state for their own convenience to run to to run administratively better okay so for betterness it was made that is why the indian government yeah the constitution of india provide the right to the parliament to amend to change to delete to form new states to amalgamate the state to bifurcate the states this is the government of india who is empowered means constitution of india provides the right to the parliament it can be seen that the state reorganization act 1956 was passed state reorganization act 1956 was passed where the new state was formed like gujarat was established there was no gujarat at all it was in mumbai so two states formed one called gujarat and another called maharashtra and constitutively this was called mumbai same like Madras also. Madras was divided and formed new states. So they they was the old state. Calcutta was the big state. The Odisha was curtailed from there. So State Reorganization Act was passed in 1956 for division of states, for division of land to make betterness administration. 
for the better administration. We are also making Uttarakhand, it is a new establishment in 2001 or 2. That is uh, Jharakhand, Chhattisgarh. We newly formed it 10 years ago. Why? Because it, is, it, it was a thinking that Uttarakhand was the part of Uttar Pradesh and that was the hilly area. It was think by the parliamentarian that the government of Uttar Pradesh cannot run better because the geographical condition is something different from the plain. That is why the persons belongs to the Uttarakhand must form their own government and run there by their own motion. So Uttarakhand is making a development. It is developing right now. But before separation from the Uttar Pradesh, it was undeveloped, least developed proportion of the Uttar Pradesh. For the better development, we made it. That is why no state can raise the hand that the central government is not empowered to change, to amend, to curtail, to amalgamate any state. Because we having a one unit that is called India. And one unit is divided. That is why if the parliament having a power to make a uh, flexibility, not a rigidity, it is not uh, wrong anyway. Because the power was delegated by the government of India to the state. That power was delegated from government of India. In case of USA, the power was delegated by the state to the nation. In case of USA, the power was delegated from the states to the nation by an agreement. But in case of our country, the power was delegated by the government of India to the state for better, better administration. So these two federations having a different way, they was constituted on the different formulas. That is why our constitution is unitary and federal made by the government made by the government of India, made by the parliament of India for the better administration. That is why we can't say that the government of India or the constitution of the India is the pure federal. This is semi-federal, formed by me. It is not federation formed by the states. It's a federation formed by me. That is why our, our, our federal structure with a strong central our structure is federal, but central is, is strong and will be prevail over the state. There is any conflict between the state and central matter and make the law by both the central and state, central law will prevail over the state law. It is a free principle of, uh, of our federation. So our system is federal as well as unitary. but divided the fed in the form of federation for our convenience for better administration <clears throat> okay now in case of unitary and federal constitutions the role of judiciary is also very very vital why see in case of usa there is two st stages of the judiciary what state judiciary state supreme court is different and the central supreme court is different there's two supreme courts each state have their own supreme court and there is the supreme court for the federation at all, at all. there is double system of judiciary and the unitary and the union judiciary is rigid the central government is not empowered to amend very easily without asking with the states because states have not surrendered their power for your convenience to make laws for me they was transferred their power for the unity for the foreign policies for the communications etc but they was not transferred their power to interfere in my matters that is why the judiciary must play a role very in very rigidity and judicial system cannot be changed easily why who will change who is in power to change nobody is the fully sovereign there because state system is different and the union system is different 
so there must be the consent of all the state with the union then it can be changed but i don't think that when 51 or 52 countries made uh, a union made a united they all will be agree on the same thing so it is very likely to be impossible not impossible but likely to be impossible that is why the role of the judiciary is very important where there is the federation on the basis of agreement but in our nation there is a single judiciary there is the single judiciary we formed the judicial system for our own convenience like we make the high courts for their own convenience it doesn't means that high court high court having a some special power equivalent to the supreme court supreme court having a superior power than the high courts why because supreme court was formed a higher authority to check out the decisions of the high court but this is not different from the high court like the supreme court of the united states the supreme courts of the states of the united states they have two different systems that is why they are on the equivalent footage but in india supreme court or in high court is not on the equivalent it is likely to be equivalent because same powers can be used by the high courts whatever the power is used by the supreme court but supreme court is empowered to overlap the decision of the high court that is why our systems our, our country system is something different that is why in case of judiciary it must be independent but in india there is not any water type separation between the or three organs we having three organs legislation executive and judiciary but there is not any water type separation you see <coughs> legislation parliament having a power for the privilege they having a privilege if you raise the hands hands that is not as per the legislations privilege then the parliament is empowered to make a punishment to announce the punishment parliament is empowered to announce the punishment who 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 is empowered to make the punishment who having the power like this this type of power is to the courts but we do not have any water rights separation that is why the power may be used by the legislation also same thing the executive has to appoint appoint the peoples appointing authority the executive but the high court is empowered to appoint their own workers high court appoint their own workers appointing authority is executive despite of this appointing authority high court used the power of the executive they appoint the judiciary adjs is directly appointed by the high court even examination is conducted by the high court there is not any interference of the state in that matter but state in the system if we have separated three organs then it is a function of the executive but used by the high court the same thing the function of the executive function of the legislation is used by the executive when when the, there is not uh, the parliament is not in the sitting then under article 123 the ordinance may be passed by the executive so who having the power to make the law that is the legislation only but in case of absence of the legislation absence of the sitting of the parliament that power can be used by the executive also so in india there is the bifurcation there is the separation but this is not the water tight separation there is a separation not a water tight separation we embedded one in, with one another if the legislation declared corrupt and the parliament also the president of the parliament or the chairman of the parliament is also declared any mp or any uh, legislative member that uh, he is corrupt then where the appeal may be lie that is the supreme court we goes to the supreme court but this this organ is different but 
one and another is embedded and if the judges of the high court and supreme court are uh, got corruption then who may uh, pass an ordinance who may make an imprisonment uh, imp uh, what impeachment that is the parliament who passed the impeachment uh, uh, who impeached the judges if there is the separation then why the parliament plays the role but in our system we embed it one with another no organ we leave it free to make their own decisions whatever they think we doesn't make it that is the system of india by this system we we are not coming on on any separate or a, or any rigid decisions for the forwardness of ourselves but this is the usual system the monarchy cannot be overlap the whole system suppose president is empowered president is having a power for all three organs but the president having a sole authority no we do not provide the sole authority to the president even theoretically he is the empowered person but practically the power is transferred to the council of ministers and council of minister got corrupted they make a wrong decision we practically goes to the supreme court when supreme court is corrupted we goes to the parliament when the government system is corrupted we goes to the supreme court if the government is not playing uh, the role whatever allotted to him the legislation parliament is empowered to replace the government by the voting rights they form a new government beyond the party system they they move beyond the party system some mlas give the vote to another party's mla and form a government because why why because in our system we want to make a smoothness in the running of country you know that is the negative point also for us that is dragging our legs two feet behind why because by this system nobody is empowered nobody have a full right to take a decision because each and every person is embedded by a chain this is the quality of india sometimes this also that uh demerits of in india okay so it is understood that what is the system of constitution and why the constitution has been framed what is the role of the constitution